Thanks a lot, Brendan. And thanks so, a lot. Petra, um, may I interrupt you before you start? Of sorry. course you can. Of course you can. If somebody can. <laughs> sorry, I you. want to say something, something very important. Actually, um, the conference, we are already at the end of our conference, GI4DM. And uh, most of you know that this is not the only conference. So we started with OSI and Europe 2 is continuing. Uh, tomorrow uh, they have also sessions. And actually these three days, GI4DM, they were very intensive, um, much more intensive than a normal physical conference. I believe the team behind the screens is completely exhausted but somehow it is also sad that we have to finish the conference. It was very nice and very fruitful. And actually the speech uh, that Professor um, Altan gave, it's really like um, bringing the point of all these conferences to human being, to climate change, and what we can do to preserve our planet for our uh, kids. Uh, it was a very nice conference and uh, we have prepared for your presentation uh, with summary of all the events and it's going to be given by Petra but before she starts talking I want to say something about her actually uh, because she's a bidding factor in all this event and I have to acknowledge it so Petra Helmholtz Hel Helmholtz <laughs> sorry Petra is a senior lecturer, um, photogrammetry and special sciences in Curtin University. Uh, she got her PhD from Germany. And in 2006, she started working uh, with, already with University of Melbourne. It was some kind of collaboration between Leipzig, uh, Leibniz uh, University Hanover and the University of Melbourne. And apparently she liked it here in Australia, because in 2012, she moved to Curtin as an academic staff member. And she is very much very dedicated to her job, but she is also very dedicated to uh, binding photogrammetry, remote sensing here in Australia. She is chair of the remote, sen remote sensing and photogrammetry commission of the Australian uh, OSI surveying and Special Sciences Institute. And she is also um, um, regional, uh, regional committee member of um, Western Australia. So actually, because of her, we couldn't attract Triple SI uh, working together with us uh, for this week of events. And uh, I have to say, uh, thank you, Petra. It was uh, very interesting. <laughs> And now you can go further with the summary of GI4DM. <laughs> that was a very, very nice introduction, Susie. Thanks a lot. And um, I will show at the end of the presentation that there were lots of helpful hands for this conference, conference but I completely agree with everything you said. I have to say that online conferences are more intense than face-to-face. And that's, that's not the only reason why I hope that soon in the future we can do face-to-face -face conferences again. Um, thanks a lot for the very nice introduction. It was a bit of a surprise. Um, um, but yeah, I, I would try to get <laughs> started with the presentation and then hand over to you um, later on again. So I will share my screen and I hope that everything will work fine. And I hope that you all can see my screen. Yes, thanks. Yep. All right. Yeah, it's all good. Yep. Thanks, Jake. Um, so yes, I have the, um, Sissy had the pleasure to open the, the, the conference and I have the pleasure to, um, to have the closing session. But before I start, I also want to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land we meet. And as for Brandon, it's for me the Nunda people, so the watcher people of the Nunda nation. Um, but I would like to extend my acknowledgement to country of country to, to all of the uh, um, all of the uh, traditional owners, um, which not just includes Australia, but also New Zealand, Canada, the US, um, in Latin America and other parts of the world. And if something was clear, not just from uh, Orang talk, 
but also from talks during the conference, is that there's a big amount of knowledge. Um, and if we want to stay alive as a humankind, I think we have to go back to, to the roots, basically. And I go on, I think in the future I will refer to the phrase, how can I buy or sell the sky? I think it's a very nice um, um, nice um, phrase. And uh, thanks for sharing that with us. All right. Uh, now my presentation disappeared. As, as Sissy already mentioned, it was a, or still is a very eventful week. It was not just the GI4DM, which was running for the last three days, but it's a whole week which focused on climate change and disaster management. So on Monday, we had the New South Wales and WA online conference, um, and that's also due to COVID-19, as that's two states on the opposite side of the country. And while we are in the same country, we are still uh, five hours by plane apart, um, could organize this conference together. So thanks a lot for all of people contributed for this uh, conference. Um, then GL4DM, where I will provide lots of more uh, de details. And then Sissy already mentioned that the Urban Resilience Asia, Asia, um, Asia Pacific 2 conference is um, ongoing to start today and will run into tomorrow. Uh, the URAP is a um, free conference, so if you are interested in the topic further, please uh, join, join the team. Um, just some brief information about GI for 4DM, so GI information for disaster management. As you see, um, who is still very active in this field, and thanks for bringing the conference to Australia with you, that would not have happened. And thanks to, to Oran and all of the other active members in the, society, uh, in the group of GI 4DM that the 13th edition could take place in, in Australia. So GI 4DM started in 2005, um, directly after the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. And since then, it's an annual event. And um, I think the next few points were summarized by oh, Oran okay. quite lovely. There are some people not on mute. Jack, could you please uh, fix that? Um, has what uh, Oran nicely uh, sum summarized that um, yes, um, we have a rapid urbanization, so we have increased population, increased density, and therefore the prediction and monitoring and the prevention and governing of man-made hazards and natural disasters becomes very, um, very relevant for many parts of this world. But um, as also Oran mentioned, we have. Um, different sources, we have different experts, we have different knowledge, we have to try to get those together to talk in order to advance the science and to uh, raise awareness um, also to politicians and policy makers. Um, we have we have um, lots of data sources available. So in the last decades, the, there was a shift from getting data to actually start to process and analyze the data. And I think the conference this the last few days made this clear as well. The challenge is not anymore to gather the data, but the challenge is to, to implement technologies, geospatial technologies and techniques which can be rapidly used in case of disasters. Um, that includes the prevention or the early warning phases. It includes an actually in the case of the disaster to, to react in, in the most efficient way. But then also the recovery phase, which was mentioned in a number of talks um, in this conference as well, especially looking back to the 2019-2020 fire season on the east coast of Australia. So GI4DM is a very good platform to, to try to, uh, to provide um, or to get people together so we actually can collaborate so that we not have just the researchers, which of course have a, is a major group of this conference, but that we also have the disaster managers and the emergency responder atten attending. And to be honest, um, I think 
we could achieve this because one of the keynote speakers, Jeremy Futel, was actually, or is actually the lead of the Fire and Rescue New South Wales, and he could nicely show in his talk of how he, um, they actually use um, the technologies which which are provided from from our from our professionals. And as already previously mentioned as well, it's important that it's international cooperation. That's um, it's a GIF4DM is co-organized, so it's not just um, just us. It's the ISPRS, the IC, ISCRM, which Ron mentioned, the UN, OOSA, ICA, FIG, OGC, EURSDR, and and EGIA. Um, so it's uh, uh, it's important to to consider all of the different professionals, but also to um, different organizations and societies, but also um, to bring a decision made makers um, on board. And that's maybe what we can try to do but in, in the future, so we can have more positive um, science impacts um, in in policy making. The map of GI 4DM conferences is uh, shown here and um, there were many many places um, where GI 4DM already took place mainly in Europe so specific in the Netherlands I think there's a high correlation with CC as well um, France and Italy um, Oran already mentioned the conferences in, in, in Turkey which is of course not part of Europe but um, a part of Asia, so we had the Czech Republic in Europe as well. We had uh, overall four countries in, in Asia, uh, in India, Vietnam, China, uh, and Turkey, and we had it also uh, in North America, in Toronto, in 2007. So GI40M 2020 was the first one in the Southern Hemisphere, and um, if you're from Australia, you know this uh, phrase, uh, but yes, we have the biggest skyscraper in the Southern Hemisphere, but now we can say we also as the first to host GI40M in the Southern Hemisphere, and also the first time in Australia and Oceania. And GI40M 2020 is also unique because it's the first fully online, and therefore I think the first fully global event in the series. Um, which, um, as we um, as already covered, um, was due to um, a disaster which uh, appeared globally. And I think if you all think back what we did one year ago, it's just amazing of how quick something can impact the whole uh, society, not just parts of the Earth, like in the past, but the, the global, um, the, uh, the whole globe. And I think one of the main reasons is the connectivity, which has lots of advantages, but in this case, um, had also uh, some, some major disadvantages. That it was a truly global conference also shows the, um, the countries where the participants came from. So we had over 247 people attending the conference. We had, due to the time zone, uh, lots of uh, people dialing in from, from, of course, Australia, but also um, um, China, New Zealand. We had, we have representation, or we had participants also from Africa, from, um, Latin America, South America, North America, I think truly global. The only one missing is Antarctica, but maybe we can change this in the future because due to the technology, there should be no, we should not be limited anymore. If you break it down in numbers, you can actually see that not just Australia was very active, but also Italy. So again, Europe uh, was uh, quite active and that's shown on my Next slide as well, but you can see they had also, uh, yes, Nigeria, Singapore, South Africa, China, uh, Dominican Republic, uh, Germany, Greece, so truly uh, internationally. And you can see, yes, the majority of the participants are uh, from Europe um, and Australia, Oceania, Oceania, Oceania pardon me, on, on the second. Um, the conference had four keynotes. Um, I want um, really, I really appreciate that Jeremy, Susan, Oran, and Philip um, took the time out to give this, uh, to give your uh, keynote speaks. 
um, they were um, um, they enriched the, the conference a, a lot, and um, I think Oran's uh, keynote at the end really summarized the event um, quite nicely. And so Oran, I already took one of your screenshots. It was very impressive to see uh, the changes um, in your images, but uh, similar images uh, from from across the globe. But then also uh, the talk from from Jeremy, from Philip, and Susan as well. Sorry, quick. So overall, we had uh, next to the. Uh, Four keynote speaks. We had ten scientific sessions, which cover a, a wide range of topics connected to disaster management. Um, one of the big topics were warming and cooling, and a specific the impact of, of urban heat and heat islands, which I think in the future will become a major issue, especially for the dense populated areas in regions such as uh, Australia, but also. Um, um, parts of America, Turkey, and in, in Asia as well. The second um, session title focused on, on fire and flood. Um, fire, I already mentioned the 2019-20 fire season in Australia, um, but um, also fires such as in, in California or in Europe, which become more and more frequent, and flooding events especially. Um, so Susan's talk covered a lot about this um, when it comes to uh, cyclones um, and flooding events. The shift away from the data more to intelligence and recovery was shown in, in the section where we uh, had lots of different platforms such as mobile mapping scanning or UAVs, which then were used to actually um, provide analyzers spatial uh, precise analysis uh, for decision makers, and one of the talks I have in my mind is the talk from um, from from Italy, where they use mobile mapping scanning to actually analyse what is the best way of how to react to COVID nineteen and social distancing rules. Uh, we had the, the, the next session or a number of uh, papers focusing on remote sensing for disaster management. And um, that's some it's a topic which has been part of GI4DM for a long, long time. And especially where we have more and more data available, high resolution satellite data, drone data, airborne data, um, the analysis and um, the processing of the data to make it accessible for decision makers in disasters is, is a very um, important and ongoing topic. And the last session title uh, was uh, Managing Disaster and Changes and Applications, um, where we try to use the systems of systems to actually get to the information required. Overall, we had 38 scientific talks. All of them were recorded. Lots of the presenter took the time to provide video recordings. They were online. Some of People got up very early or stayed up very late. So I much appreciate all of the contributions. And the 38 papers, scientific talks, um, have papers, overall 22 ISPS archive papers and 16 ISPS annals papers. And those papers have been published already on the ISPS webpage. So if you found one or the other topic very interesting, I just um, I motivate you go to the page, find the paper, and get in touch with, with the with the authors. I thank a lot to the chairs. So I I was very busy in taking screenshots in the last couple of of, of hours days. Thanks a lot to Cecilia, Nancy, Dimitri, Charles, Koros, Chris, Alice, and G as well. Um, it was sometimes a tough time, but I think. Um, the chairs and the presenters uh, helped to deliver a quite a very successful event. Back to the authors. So overall, mentioned we we had 38 papers, and here you can see the distribution of where the authors came from. Again, Australia and Italy are the strongest, but you can see that the third strongest nation is, is Vietnam, and then USA, Spain and lots of European nations. So it's very good to see the shift also to um, to the uh, to countries which are very um, 
very much under risk to become more active in GI4DM so that GI4DM actually can provide a platform for everyone who um, not only does, does the research but also bene can benefit from the research which is undertaken. <laughs> And some more screenshot, screenshots from the presentations. Um, and yes, again, thanks a lot to all of the people who came online to present at some live, but to answer questions and to actually make this a very successful event. Without, without all of the presenters, um, we could not have achieved what we have achieved in the last few days. Let's have a look of what was actually presented. And um, Jack prepared this lovely uh, cloud of words in form of echidna. So the animal you can see, the shape is uh, echidna. It's an uh, Australian marsupial. Um, and um, hopefully at one stage you actually can travel to Australia and have a chance to, to have a look um, at um, not just echidnas, but all of the other native animals as well. But if you compare uh, about the titles or compare the titles between the annals and the archives, you can see that um, study or case and data are very prominent in both. Whereas in, archi in the archives, we have more the disaster and the risk and the GIS component. And in the annals, we have also some more sensor data, such as the, the cloud, uh, um, cloud based. Uh, point clouds, um, LIDAR, um, and more the data-driven um, uh, topics. If you go to the keywords which were used, um, in this case presented in the shape of a koala and a kangaroo, we can see that the keywords again has some overlap. Um, in the archives, pretty, pretty obvious uh, GIS is the strongest followed by a data disaster risk, but also UAV, 3D uh, system mapping and management. And again, with the annals, we have lots, um, we have more the model and data uh, keywords, LIDAR, Landsat, uh, UAS, so UAV systems as well. Um, just, yeah, just to give you an overview, uh, 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 idea of the keywords which, which uh, were used in the papers. All of the papers could not have been published and the presenters could not have been provided with the feedback without the review. Overall, we had 103 reviews. Each paper got reviewed by at least two reviewers, sometimes three or more. Um, and again, it's a truly um, global um, distribution. This, this case and this time um, mostly from Australia, but you can see also many cases um, from, from Belgium, Canada, uh, Germany, New Zealand um, um, as well. So thanks a lot to all of the reviewers um, who were very busy and active um, to review the papers and to provide feedback to the authors. Something which we introduced for GL4DM for the online versions were the panels. And the panels, um, try to to break from just looking at the screen to do more to see more interactive um, discussions so overall we had six uh, panels and um, at least from my point of view there was very successful if if you think that's uh, something which should be kept for the future as well or if you enjoyed the panels or other uh, aspects please um, please let us know um, it would be good to get your feedback. So I will, I will present all of the different panels on the next slide because then you actually can see the faces as well. And, and, and Sissy, I, I put you on here on the panel um, because you had the opening, the opening. But then we had a panel discussion about First Nations where we especially try to um, cover uh, some of the aspects Brandon and Oran just discussed. We had a special panel about COVID-19 and geotechnology. And uh, Marie is actually um, part of the WHO, um, which was a, yeah, which made this panel very interesting. We had one panel about education for GODM because with more and more 
data available with more and more users, it's very important uh, to put a high emphasis also on the education, which helps to make this information or the analysis, the outcomes um, actually accessible uh, to, to a wide audience, not just spatial professionals. We had one session about um, managing warming and cooling environments, and that was a good panel which also showed how citizen science can work, so how we actually can engage with, with the, uh, with the um, let's say, everyday audience who actually will be impacted by, um, in this case, warming the most. We had one panel just about the Australian 1920 bushfire season, um, which basically summarized um, as well that um, as an aspect of not just having the data available, but also the analysis and uh, and next steps. And the last panel, the panel number six, was the panel about remote sensing for DM, um, where um, where um, Peter Kinner together with um, representatives from, from industry, uh, from high resolution airborne and satellite platforms, um, but also drone capture, tried to discuss of the challenges and uh, especially the challenges also from getting the information we, we can capture to, to the decision makers and where the bottlenecks are and what we maybe should change in the future. On Tuesday, before the official start of the conference, we also offered six tutorials. Um, Professor Clyde Fraser from the University of Melbourne uh, gave a tutorial about structure for motion and photogrammetry. Um, I think that's something, not just in my, I say this not just because it's in my field, but um, to educate people of using the tools which are available in the most efficient way, it's, it's very important. Um, then Bruce Forster uh, talked about um, the introduction of uh, radar remote sensing and this uh, tutorial was in the morning and then Deepak uh, Power Day from S3 um, picked up on the topic and discussed how radar or better SAR interferometry can be used for them safety. Um, Mitko um, Alexandrov presented or gave a tutorial about uh, the creation of local based um, AR apps with Unity and Mapbox. And I think uh, while, yes, we can use radar or photogrammetry to produce models and um, analysis tools, it's very important to also present it and to make it accessible. And that was tutorial, tutorial could, could achieve this uh, very good. Then David McMeekin from Curtin University presented about semantic web tools and technologies. Um, so just a different way of going away from the traditional way of, of finding information to use uh, semantics and the semantic web um, to, um, to enrich data by just trying to connect them with each other, in this case using uh, semantic tools. And then Ori Goods, um, also from the University of New South Wales, uh, um, gave a tutorial about visualizing bushfires and especially using open source tools. And I think the open source tools are important because um, if, if, if we want to make um, the, the workflows and the technology um, accessible to, to everyone, then I think open source is a very important aspect of it. As a conference chairs, um, I have mentioned this here a number of times. Um, but I also would like to mention um, explicitly David um, Sanderson. So David is the chair for the Euro Europe Resilience Asia Pacific 2 conference, which um, started today and will uh, carry on until tomorrow. And also Mary Ellen Finney, um, who was the main driving factor behind uh, in organizing the uh, conference on the first day, the IIIWA uh, New South Wales conference. Big thanks also to Clive and Meg, who were, were conference chairs and who contributed significantly. And also big uh, thanks to our 
co-chairs. So Bruce, um, who gave the tutorial, Chris was one of the chairs, Deepak gave a tutorial as well, Ivana was part of a panel dis discussion. David could not be a chair because of other commitments, but he was very busy with reviewing papers. Uh, Brandon, thanks for uh, chairing the last session, and Nancy who chaired um, a session early on uh, today as well. But all this, and that's truly, I mean it very truly, all this would not happen without the guys on this slide. Um, to change to fully online, we knew there would be some challenges, but I think the only people who truly know which challenges were there and were very busy in the background uh, is Jack and Mitko and the team of Abdullah G. Jeng, Lee, Nina, and Mohammed. So thanks a lot, guys. Um, that was a very big effort. And I apologize that I was a pain in the backside with sending so many emails. Uh, YouTube doesn't work or whatever, but you did a fantastic job and, and thanks a lot. And just to give you some faces as well, you have on the top the, uh, the control center. Um, and um, maybe some of you have seen Jack online. So that's the strange wall with the green sign in the background. Now you have a spatial context of it. Uh, but um, everyone else um, on the uh, Sean as well. So mid course on the, on the bottom left. So thanks a lot. And lucky enough, because of you guys, you didn't see as often the screen on the top right side, the, te the technical difficulties um, that was uh, under, well under control. Thanks a lot. And of course, um, the conference also could not happen without the sponsors. Um, that's, uh, the sponsors are, first of all, the, the four universities, the Curtin University, the ANU, the Australian National University, the University of Melbourne, and the University of New South Wales. And it's also truly um, an effort of universities from different states, from West Australia, from Canberra, from Victoria, and from New South Wales. Thanks a lot also to the ISPRS, um, um, who has been uh, connected with GI4DM for a long time and where the papers are published and the SSI, so the Surveying and Spatial Sciences Institute of Australia, um, which is the uh, umbrella for um, all spatial um, professionals, which includes not just um, as Sissy already mentioned, photogrammetry and remote sensing, but also uh, GIS, um, mining engineering surveying, and capacity surveying. Then we had uh, some, uh, we had sponsors, Black Ash and Mercury, and um, big thanks for their support for for the conference. And before I hand over to to Sissy, I just want to again say thanks a lot to first of all not mentioned yet, but our Auntie Yvonne Sims, shown on the top right side for the um, welcome to country, um, for the, to the four big universities, to the sponsors, to the keynote speakers, to the tutors, to the moderators and the panelists, to the authors and co-authors, the reviewers, the participants, the organizers and technical support. Thanks a lot. Um, to uh, Sissy for enabling to get the conference here. Thanks a lot for the uh, to Jake Mitko and the UNSW team to make it actually happen. And I hope at one stage I can see you in person again um, uh, when we can travel again, and um, then I can um, then I can say the appreciation of true Aussie way. And um, yes, thanks a lot for 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 all the efforts of all of you guys. And with this, Sissy, I would like to hand over to you to present the last um, the last slides. Thank you very much, Petra. It's a really wonderful summary that you gave for uh, our conference. And I think you make uh, many people jealous that they, for one or another reason, couldn't follow all these presentations. Um, now we are coming to the one very beautiful moment within the closing uh, ceremonies, the awards. 
Um, we have two awards. One of them is for best paper and the other one is for best presentation. And I must say that it was a really very tough competition. We had very good uh, papers and also very good presentations. Actually, I must say I uh, realized that the presentations that were given as a virtual pre-recorded presentations um, were much better than um, the presentations that usually are given at face-to-face uh, um, -face, uh, conferences. I don't know why it's this, probably because people can try and try and try and make a very nice presentation, but everything was really kind of uh, excellent. And the com competition was uh, really very tough. Um, we have a committee, uh, different committees for the two um, awards. Uh, the first committee on the best paper also included the chairs and actually also we consider uh, how the reviewers look at the papers. And uh, yeah, we have winner. And Petra, if you go to this slide, to the next slide, best paper, ah, <laughs> best paper award is for um, Pravita Sharma, and actually there are a lot of people <laughs> within this paper that contributed to it. And the paper is Disaster Aware Global Alerting Platform for Flood Events. I checked the paper, uh, all, the present, uh, all the authors are from the United States, and I don't believe anybody of them is uh, at the moment here. Uh, it's probably four o'clock in the morning in the East Coast and probably 11, uh, 1 o'clock in the West Coast, but uh, they will receive uh, the award and also a uh, small gift uh, virtually because it is a virtual conference, so everything is going to be sent virtually to them. So, congratulations, Pravita Sharma, and the rest. Very well done. Um, the next award is for best presentation. And the best presentation award is for Sunny Singh for the paper Experimental Study to Compare Factors Influencing Exit Choice Behavior in Emergency Evacuation Situations Using Virtual Reality Techniques. So Sunny is from Australia and I wonder whether he's still here. Sunny, if you are here, could you switch your video? Um, uh, thank you so much, Professor. I just, yes, I am still here. Um, am I audible? Uh, can you hear me? Yes, oh, we, we can. can hear you. We cannot okay, see you. Let me try and turn on my video. See if that works. Um, hey. <laughs> hey, Sunny. <laughs> Congratulations for the award. Thank you so uh, much. You deserve it. Is. It, it was is. really a very nice presentation. Thank you so and, much. And uh, yeah, we can give him some applause. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is breathtaking. <laughs> so you, you, you can say something. Of course, no, this, this is a word. Say something. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I have not prepared an acceptance speech, to be honest, <laughs> because honestly, I wasn't expecting it. But yeah, um, it, I mean, um, throughout the journey, like the support that I've received from Professor Sisi herself and then my co-author, Professor Miad, um, Miad as well. Um, so, so much hard work goes into, into, you know, everything that was presented here. Um, I'm... I'm Pretty sure everyone else's presentation was equally. I, I personally attended quite a lot of presentations as well. It was it was such a level field. Everyone did so well. Um, yeah, and um, it, it's 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 such a great honor to to actually be um, recognized for the work that that um, I was able to contribute to the um, to the conference. And I mean, at the end of the day. Uh, we all strive to to make our world better um, every single day, right? So that's. I hope my presentation and my my research will contribute towards that. And uh, yeah, let's just keep striving towards um, being better. Thank you.
Thank you. Very nice speech, although I'm not prepared. <laughs> And now, when we finish with these um, awards, actually, we don't have anything more to say. Um, probably only to see where we are going next year or the years after. And actually, we are going to have a conference next year. Uh, it's going to be in Beijing, in China, and it's going to be organized by the team of Professor Jing Jie. Uh, in the University of uh, Civil Engineering and Architecture. It's actually Beijing University of Civil Engineering and uh, Architecture. <coughs> the university is... <coughs> sorry. The university is uh, relatively young, but actually it's growing and they have a nice, um, huge, beautiful campus in one of the uh, very isolated parts of Beijing. To go there is really kind of uh, uh, experience. But anyhow, they have all the facilities and a uh, wonderful environment for organizing a conference. Uh, as you can see, they have 10 schools and uh, a lot of programs in all um, uh, discipline related to uh, technology, architecture, civil engineering, environmental, um, modeling, surveying, mapping, and so forth, and so forth. Um, they have also quite <coughs> famous uh, researchers. They're, uh, from a perspective of uh, geoscience, um, they're very good and famous in uh, international um, modeling. But if you go back to the slide, to the previous slide, in um, architectural uh, preservation, and they're actually um, restorating uh, many of uh, uh, sites in China, and specifically with these um, uh, terracotta um, soldiers, they have a procedure to reconstruct um, the soldiers more or less automatically from um, limited uh, pieces that they have found on the excavation site. So. It's very interesting to go there and to see the research. Uh, so now let's go to the next slide. Um, yeah, they are really very uh, busy with all kinds of activities, um, symposia, conferences. Um, they are very hospitable and uh, they're really open to um, welcome GI4DM uh, next year. The date is still not defined because still of coronavirus. Um, probably it's going to be at the end of the year, similar to what we have this year. And again, probably it's going to be organized together with some other conference in such a way to uh, bring researchers, professionals, uh, vendors together to be able to exchange um, experiences and they hope very much that it's going to be a face-to-face -face conference in person conference and they will not need to do a hybrid or virtual conference so let's hope and um, what can i say that's it and um, the only thing what we can say is see you in beijing thank you very much for being with us so late and being with us all these days on the conference. Don't forget that there is some other event that you can follow tomorrow. And uh, yeah, I suggest now let's everybody puts its camera on so we see each other. And yeah. probably all the mics, if you put them on. Yeah. <laughs> and let's give well applause. Done, everyone. <laughs> okay, so this is everything. It's sad <laughs> that we have to finish, but we will see each other next year. Thank see you, Cici. Yeah. Until next year. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. See you next year. Very nice. Bye bye.
check I can see you twice. Yes, I'm the, the room computer as well. I can get both my best angles on the camera. If you stop, <laughs> you can do some stereo photogrammetry. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's the that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, there's a bit more work to do. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well deserved. Enjoy your beer. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Right, thank you, Petra. That was great. That went really well. That was you, you, that was a, that was very good, actually. Very thorough and went through everything and evidence based. You know, evidence based. Good. Yep. Sometimes good not to see the audience because then you're less nervous. Yeah, no, I was, I was laughing out loud. I had to check my microphone was um, off. Or, you know, maybe it should have been. You know. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah, see you soon. Good. I think a debrief at one stage. Great. Okay. See you then, Petra. Bye-bye. See ya.